Our next presenter, and uh, many of you have known him, many of you might have been instructed by him. Um, I'm sure most of you have gotten gas at his shop for many, many years. This is uh, Bill Reniker, longtime cave diver, and he's going to give us a talk on the history of side mount. Take it away, Bill. Okay. I guess I got to start in, in 80, 87, I learned to cave dive, which to me is just like yesterday. And, and I fell in love with cave diving and I also uh, found out about Side Mountain. And uh, uh, it must have been 88, 89, I took a class from Lamar Hires. Uh, and I still say that, you know, if, if you want to learn how to do something, go to an instructor they may save you 25 dives worth of heartaches if, if you just listen to them, see? Anyway, back in that days, you took open water BCD. And uh, this is the Sherwood BCD. And the nice thing about these is, is, you know, they had a lot of air around the neck. You remember they used to advertise if you passed out, they'd keep your head above the water, which we all know that was bullshit. <laughs> but, uh, uh, the thing I did, when you put your tanks on, oh, all this weight was right here. What do you do with the weight? Uh, and it was a problem. So actually, side mounting through the years is tremendous changes in the equipment. Uh, now for me, I guess since Lamar's here, I'm going to... Lamar called me up one day and he said, Lamar, or Bill, he said, you still got your old equipment? I said, yeah. And he said... Can I come and look at it? And I said, well, I don't care. So he come out. And, and so I never got to make it, but my equipment went to England. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, on this thing here, I used an eight-inch tire inner tube. That's what this piece here was. And so I could go pss, pss, and raise my butt to get me nice and level and, and to keep it accordingly. Again, you can see time is tearing everything up here. But the uh, only thing I'm going to say is, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, on, on your BC inflators, you need to understand which one is which, because I think there have been a lot of accidents. People have two BC inflators, and you don't know which one controls which, and it can get you into trouble pretty easy. Anyways, this was, is, uh, was my written, this is a Paul Smith harness at the time, and then, the other thing I want to point out is if you've ever played with side mounting, and you, I always called these the wet noodles, and I hated them. I mean, you can't find them when you want them. So this particular rig I, I used to put in stainless steel screws and welded the piece on it. Well, I thought, my God, this is, this is nice because I know where it's at, and I can clip it, I can find it, and we can go. So yes, uh, uh, this was here. I'm going to give a little brief thing of the equipment as I went through it, but still, then I'm going to open it up to you guys. I want this presentation to be for you, so if you got any questions about side mount, just ask me. I may not know it all. If not, Lamar will know the other half. Uh, uh, again, as you're going to see as we go, rubber. If you want to protect something, use rubber. Enter two. Uh, and you're going to see on some of this other equipment as I go through how much it, it, it uh, got used. But anyways, this is my first piece of equipment. I know it may look bad, but it worked. Ancient is what I heard. Yeah, if you say first means it's very old. <laughs> yeah. Character. That's true. There we go. And the second piece of equipment, you, I'm assuming most of you have seen my, uh, the video of the convict springs. Okay, what you look at it today and you say, Jesus Christ, that's, a, that's an antique equipment. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, I still think this is the best uh, side mount rig ever made. This is just a, 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 a junior wing. And you make a T-piece uh, uh, here that takes care of your back plate. And you just use a regular harness but the thing can be rotted up and go. There's no weight to it, no nothing. Uh, 
but that video was shot with this harness. Um, I still think it's one of the best harnesses that I've used. Again, this is very simple um, unit, and it worked good for me. And and again, the other thing you got to need about uh, equipment is this got to be pliable, especially if you try to start going through little holes. You know that equipment has to be able to move to get you through. Um, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had to take this off just to get back out. Because <laughs> you can get yourself wedged in there pretty good. Anyways, again, that's what this equipment is. Uh, again, I got, you can see I used the rubber inner tubes to protect the, the inflators because those inflators took a, a heck of a, a hit, a problem. And then this evolved to be my last unit, which is a, a Sport Wings 2. Uh, again, you can see I covered it all up best I could. Uh, and Betty, I got it wore out. <laughs> but, uh, and again, as things go, we, they've now went to like these, the tank holders, they went to all kinds of stuff. But I still said the, the original two inch tire bicycle inner tube, probably the best thing going. <laughs> but it don't last but six months and you got, you're going to change it, you know, so. So longevity really counts, but sometimes it works easy. Anyways, this is uh, uh, the last of the units that I actively dove, uh, and it did me a very good job. Did me a very good job. Um, then the other unit, uh, I went to Brazil twice teaching side now, and uh, Sequest, one that sponsored me, I mean, they paid my airline tickets and everything. And I don't know if you don't know about going to Sao Paulo, but that's an expensive proposition. But anyways, the um, hired hands, the wives, they did all the sewing on this. And, and anyways, I like this VCD real well. And, and I said, can I got it? And they said, oh, no, no, it's got to go to Sequest wants to see it. So um, anyways... All I know is, is I got a, I don't know what they did, called me or whatever, and they said, well, Mr. Renneker, you want that BCD? And I said, yeah. They said, well, in six months you'll have it. And sure enough, I, they shipped it to me. Uh, but the thing I'm going to say about this one is, see, the BCD is only like this. I mean, it really worked out nice. Uh, I didn't quite like this piece here. You can see I really rubbed the shit out of it. But... But uh, uh, the, you didn't get the wing effect, the elephant ear effect out of this unit because uh, it was all tied down. This or that. So I just thought I'd show it. I, I'm still thankful for them to pay in my uh, airline tickets and, and my staying in when I was in Brazil. But uh, this is the Black Diamond. I don't know if you know anything about BCDs, but these are very expensive very expensive. Anyways, I guess this is just an outlay of my equipment and what I've done. So now then, up to you people, what would you like to know? I'd be more than happy to, to help y'all out. Hello. So, uh, so anybody what, got any questions? What, what was it that you were doing down in Brazil? Teaching side mount. Yeah. I had a lot of customers from Brazil. And learning to repel. Yeah. <laughs> learning to repel. And, yeah. yeah. I need I need to take this class over here, people. I fell over 200 foot on rope, and I got the scars to prove it. That's that was the story I was going after. <laughs> I, I got the scars to prove it. I was a lucky man too. How many dives do you have on your last side number? Oh, Linda, I'd hate to say. <coughs> we spent many I spent many hours in the water with this I know that I don't know how many dives uh, you've got them all locked right oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Water -locked. laughs> 
I think I kept my log book to a thousand dives, and I quit logging after a thousand. But of course, one of the things that gets me is Tom Mount says he still logs all these, but he's logged every dive he's ever done. And I, I'm thinking, oh my God. <laughs> I guess I gotta give him credit for that one. But especially when you're teaching, you know, uh, the dives are repetitive. Uh, of course, I, I was very fortunate to teach a lot of people uh, and, and really enjoyed teaching. Uh, how do you design, design your side mount to move? What do you do? What, how do you make it moving and not getting stuck? What, what well, you just, mean? again, on this particular rig here, once it comes over the shoulders, you, I don't want nothing to come up to catch me, to catch. It's got to be able to move through. And then, let's say getting to the extreme side, you know, this is a couple of inches of thickness. And sometimes a couple of inches is a lot. So again, you make your equipment to get it off easily. And I, I remember I mentioned this to Lamar one time and he, I don't think, he got it, but I'm all I'm trying to say. <laughs> the stuff he was doing was pretty extreme. Yeah, you know, some things you just can't fix. <laughs> well, but when you, when you when you got everything here, what I'm trying to say, and I think all side mount equipment needs to have to un, the to un, unbuckle it. But you, when you drop this, you got to be out of it. Uh, don't don't be hooking stuff up to the bottom. Um, because uh, you got to be able, in other words, I got to be go snap, snap, and I can crawl out of the equipment. Uh, yeah. I have a question for you, Bill. Well, yeah. How many times have you been hung up hard enough that you were actually concerned? Me? Yeah. Three. <laughs> I'm a lucky man. How about, how about we talk about one of them? <laughs> My best one. <laughs> the worst one, the one you were scared to say, uh, <laughs> Kate, you had to change. Well, this is going to be very simple, but it's also there. But one of the caves that I was showed in the river, and so I got, and it was small, very small, uh, maybe, maybe 500 foot penetration. But anyways, I turned around to come back out, and, and, uh, of course, I'm wiggling through, and I'm trying to get through, and I get through, and and the cave collapsed on me. So I'm thinking, well, I'm okay. But then uh, I remember my right foot, I could move it, but the left foot, uh, the fin was caught. And my question is, have you ever tried to break a rubber strap on a fin underwater? <laughs> I, I thought that was my ending. Uh, but I finally got the strap to break. And, and I made it out. The fin's still in it. Someday somebody will find that cave. And they're gonna find that cave. <laughs> but uh, You ain't going back for it, huh? I ain't going back for it. <laughs> no, I guess that was one. And I had one. Uh, it's upstream from uh, uh, Charles Springs. Uh, again, it's it's the innocent things that get you in trouble every time. But the uh, water, beautiful blue water coming out in the middle of the river, and, and I look at it, and, and so I think, okay. Of course, you know you know what it's like taking a light, trying to look at a cave in sunshine. So, so I went back after dark to take another look at it, and sure enough, man. It looked like a nice rocky bottom. Everything is fine. So I decided to, and believe it or not, no matter how crazy you think I am, I, <laughs> I always looked at stuff and thought about it before I, you know, I'd go home and sleep on it. I'd look at the, look at the situation. What do I got to do to, to get in there? And of course, you got to remember when you turn around and come back out, it's all 180 degrees. So don't think that you can get through one way and turn around and come back the same way. It ain't going to work. Uh, anyways, uh, I get there and I'm, I got all my equipment and, and uh, so of course I'm ready to go. My heart's a pounding. Man, I started down through there and it just, it just went whoop. 
And the next thing you know, I'm upside down and I can't move, I can't do this, I can't hardly breathe. And, and uh, what happened, uh, what some other people had tell me what happened, but with the sticks and the flow of the cave coming out, once I plugged up that hole, all the sand just fell in on top of me. And that was not a good day either. So, How did you get out of just took my time. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing. And the bad thing about it, that bad or whatever, but at the time I was using the, uh, Genesis hundreds, and so I, I had them pumped, you know, let's say to 4,500. So let's say I started on the one tank at 4,500, but to, when I got out, the tank, of course, there's no way you're going to change regulators. I couldn't even move my hands. Anyways. When I got out, the tank that I was breathing off of only had 100 pounds in it. So it took me a while to get out of that. Well, Bill, wasn't that the inspiration for your cave classes after that? You always had your guy swim with one fin on an exit. Well, I yes, I caught all my... <laughs> I took a lot of shit for this, but... <laughs> but all my students swam with one fin. I was, I was training chairman during the time he was doing all this stuff. I got questioned about it a lot. <laughs> but, but I knew where it came from. <laughs> well, no. I, all I'm trying to say is, is from uh, pothole to peacock, I'd always make my students swim with one fin. And, and it's very ser simple. To me, it's very important. Is you know, when you, you, I, I never tell them what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, watch me and do what I do. So I take off a fin and swim away from them. But most of the time, they're just a, you're just a flap and they ain't going no place, you know? But time you do that 500 feet, you're gonna, what I'm trying to say is you need to learn to pick up the water and push it. And if you'll swim with the right foot for a while and the left foot for a while, it's amazing when you put two fins together, how easy it is to swim. And, and that's all I was trying to say. You could have leg cramps, uh, and Bird, you know, a very good friend of mine, I was helping him teach uh, one time in Little River, and he wanted a, another little drill to do in Little River, and I said, well, how about my one fin swim? And he said, oh, 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 he just, you know, he went off on a deep end with me. No, I swear to God, he had a student break a fin strap on that dive. <laughs> I said, well, you got to learn. You got to learn to swim with one fin, you know. No, I did take a lot of shit over the one fin swim. But it all came from that dive where he lost one, so he figured everybody needed to. Everybody needed to learn. <laughs> you learned the hard way, though. But I thought, but I always thought it was important, and I, and I think it is important that you need to learn to swim like that. Any other questions? I'll tell you another one too. This man here right now told me one time, uh, and I got to admit it to him. But he said, Bill, whatever you do when you get to, to uh, getting off your equipment, because you know, I've been known to go, go underwater with just my swimming trunks on, because I, you know, wetsuit's awful thick. Careful. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but Lamar said, whatever you do, you always strap your tank to you. And I got caught on that in Peacock one time. Because I was, I was just in my swimming trunks and I got through this opening and and sure enough, the tank got away from me, and it's down this little crevice, and I barely was able to reach the regulator to pull it up. So from then on, I had a lanyard around my neck. I could always get my tank. They never was going to get away from me again. You remember telling me that, Lamar? And yeah, that was because of what I experienced at Cal when I was trying to push the, the crack downstream, the vertical crack, one tank off, pushing it ahead, and I let go of the valve. And thank God I was able to get it back with the hose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, always, always, if, if you're going to get there, always, always uh, have that tank where it cannot get away from you. 